Hello, Ron Clark, here again with the magic box. Let's see what question we have today. If I get the magic box open. Okay. The question is, do you have any advice for someone who wants to free themselves from pornography? The simple answer is yes, but it'll take me a while to get there, so you got to bear with me. Now, <clears throat> let's start out by saying, in this discussion, we are removing shame from this discussion, okay? If you have a porn addiction, you do, so what? Okay, there's no shame here. Now, I've gotten this question just a million times, it seems. All from men. All from men. Young men, old men, doesn't matter age, but strictly from men. I've never gotten this question from a woman. Okay. So, <clears throat> I will speak to you as a man, because <laughs> obviously I am a man. Um, <clears throat> so, at the root of this question, is not pornography. It's not sexuality. At the root of this question is control. It's no wonder that you have a porn connection, a porn obsession, because society pushes us to this. Your addiction is, is caused is created by our society. Much like alcohol addiction, it is created by the society in which we live. It doesn't negate the fact that it is up to us to deal with it once we have, you know, experienced it or become subject to it. So, in what way is a porn addiction about control? Now, societies have always had ways of enforcing a code of behavior upon its members. This is how societies continue, how cultures continue, by imposing a set of behaviors, right? Now, most common is culture. Our culture we're brought up with acceptable behaviors within our culture. It's different from culture to culture. Another big force is religion. Religion enforces a set of behaviors. It does so in a different way than a culture does. Religion works with shame as the primary motivation, shame and fear, right? Now, <clears throat> In our modern society uh, of internet, of phones, of television, of screen, our, our whole reality is shaped by these uh, sort of mythological ideas about how to behave. And each of these media is manipulative. It's, they are all manipulating us at emotional levels, at ideological levels. They manipulate us with emotion, with sound, with color, with image, and with sex. Sex is everywhere in our media, and it is everywhere in our culture. It is the basis upon which we treat each other in our society. We treat women as sexual objects. It seems like we always have, as men, relegated women to the, the status of possession, right? You are here to service my needs as a man. 
That's the basis. That's the basis of so much in our societies at this point in our evolution. You know, it wasn't always this way, but it has grown into this. We see it from the extreme to the subtle. Everything in between. We treat each other as men also on the basis of our sexual prowess. Our, yeah, I mean, sex pervades everything in our cultures. It's always brought to our attention by the way we dress, by the way we act, etc. Okay? I mean, it's just everywhere. So it, it's never, it's never not within our, presented to our awareness. Okay? We are always presented with sexuality everywhere. Pornography is the, a great manipulator, a great tool to manipulate people, <laughs> primarily men, but also women. Since approximately the 1920s, say, when women got the vote, the men who were running everything realized suddenly that, oh, We've got to snag the women with this sexual cue in the same way that we have snagged the men. Because up to that point, men had been manipulated with sex, you know, for centuries before that, okay? So now it was time to bring the women into it too. So we had the Hollywood Idol the musical idol. So it was a really a, a soft core sort of pornography. Men had access to hardcore pornography. And now, with media, with movies, with news, with advertisement, it became all soft core pornography, pornography for everyone. Attractive men and attractive women. We're everywhere, selling everything. Everything we buy is sold to us by beautiful people, okay? So, and now with the advent of the internet, well, first it was VCR tapes. You could get pornography on VCR tapes so easily at the local, you know, video store. So we started getting more and more access to pornography, and now with the internet, it's everywhere. It's, it's cropping up uh, softcore pornography to the almost to the extent of hardcore. It's showing up on my Facebook feed of all places. You know, it's it's everywhere. So the magic of pornography as a tool of control is, whoa, this is the most powerful thing in all of human history, really, in terms of psychic control, psychological control of a populace. So, <clears throat> pornography, the part of pornography that is not spoken is masturbation, okay? Because what do you do with pornography? You masturbate to pornography. Plain and simple. Now, there's nothing wrong with masturbation, but there's all this societal shame religious, political, cultural shame associated with pornography. 
with masturbation specifically and sex secondarily. Sex, oh, this is it. The schism, the psychic schism by the way that society treats sex to begin with. This is this utterly natural part of being, a living human being, is the sexual urge. That is part of being in these bodies. But we are shamed. We are shamed for our sexual urges. A woman is a whore. A man is just like, your dick leads you everywhere. We are always shamed for our sexuality. And this creates a schism that is in every one of us modern Western human beings. This schism of the shame that we experience for something that is undeniable, unavoidable, and completely natural. Completely no reason to be ashamed of, but we are ashamed for it. So, we have this schism at the basis of this manipulation. Add to that masturbation, which is an even bigger taboo but something that, again, is completely natural. Every, every sexual being masturbates. You know, modern science has looked at all these other species of animals that are sexual, and they all masturbate. Every one of us does this. And every one of us hides it. We don't talk about it. <laughs> well, for the most part. There are, of course, parts of our culture that do, that celebrate it, that revel in it. But that's not the norm. And we're talking here about the norm, okay? The enforced norm is ashamed when it comes to masturbation. They do it in private. You know, all boys have little horror stories of growing up worried that their parents or their brothers and sisters are going to catch them masturbating. And they felt bad about it. We've all grown up with this shame. We have this schism. And this schism, what it does is it separates layers of awareness the natural layers of awareness, the layers of our body's awareness, the sub and unconscious levels of awareness, what that schism does is it separates us from the higher mind. It focuses us in the sub and unconscious parts of our awareness, in which we have very little power. And which are so open to manipulation. This is the magic of advertisement. It separates these layers of our awareness and it speaks directly to our sub and unconscious minds, telling us you have to buy this. You want this. You can't live without this. This is how you should feel. This is how you should think. Okay? So, pornography is this great tool for opening us up to that level of awareness that can be programmed so that we can be told how to behave in society, right? Now, <clears throat> because we are manipulated at that level of awareness, all the time, everything around us is manipulating us in this way, we are particularly vulnerable. At this point of the world, we are particularly 
vulnerable until we start recognizing what's going on and saying, fuck you, <laughs> you know? I don't want to be manipulated in this way anymore. I choose to instead think for myself and decide for myself. And that is what is required in dealing with any addiction, but porn addiction in particular, to take back control. <laughs> because the addiction is the sign that you are out of control, that some other force has control over your life, over who you are choosing to be. Okay? So, a porn addiction. There are several components here. One component is sexual. Sexual gratification, horniness, <laughs> um, which of course is totally normal and nothing to be ashamed of. We've got to remove shame from the equation because that is the primary, primary latch that they have gotten a hold of and are manipulating you with is your shame. Totally irrelevant, totally unnecessary. You look into it and you will see that there is nothing unnatural in being horny, in being sexual and having sexual urges. It's part of a healthy human being. Okay? So, one component is sexual, the shame of being sexual. Another component is, as I said, masturbation. Which again, is nothing to be ashamed of. Okay? Third component is our attraction. Now we each have specific body forms, body shape, size, you know, color, uh, you know, all the things that, that compose what for us is the ideal of attraction. Now, some scientists say that this is all based on uh, genetics, you know, that it is a genetic urge, a genetic matching up that is occurring from... Uh, oh, Fremones, hormones, you know, visual input, all of it goes into forming this ideal. So pornography plays with that. It presents you with something approaching your ideal. So there's this extra layer of attraction. It grabs you, right? <clears throat> So, to, to break free of what you, you are calling an addiction to porn, and we have to really define what we mean by addiction, but we'll get to that. To break free of that, you have to identify all the ways in which you are being manipulated. All the uh, handles that this, this power of pornography is grabbing hold of to manipulate you. In other words, you have to bring your higher mind into what is happening with you and pornography. You've got to really examine what is happening. You've got to identify all the different ways that you are being bound, that you are being bound to this porno pornography. What ways 
Is it latching onto you? Look at the, what specific things are attracting you at a sexual level. Look at what things are attracting you at an emotional level. Because at the root of all of this is our emotional need for connection with other. That's the emotional part of sexual urges. That need for connection with other. Okay? So in what way is it trying to fake, you know, this emotional connection that you really desire? Look at... Now really, you have to look at the people involved in the pornography itself, in the pornographic images in front of you. Feel. Try to feel, get inside of their state of mind. What is the state of mind of someone doing this sexual act on screen for others to observe? What is the mindset of someone who would do that with their lives, who would do that with their body, with their sexuality? What sort of psychological twists and turns does it take for you to be that person on the screen? So you have to examine the personal consequences of this pornography, not only just on you, but on the person doing it. What, you know, what, what impact is this going to have on their lives 30, 40, 50 years from now? When they look back, at their, you know, at this point in their lives when they were prostituting themselves, basically. Because that's basically what pornography is, is it's prostitution. You know, the, the give and take is a little different than ordinary prostitution, person to person, in person prostitution, but it comes down to the same thing, okay? What we are doing through pornography is objectifying the people that are participating in the pornography. They become objects solely for our own sexual gratification. So, you have to look at, like I said, not only what's happening in the minds, the lives of the people, you know, on screen, but how you are treating other human beings. Do you want to really objectify people in this way? So, you also have to look at the fact of the manipulation that is happening to you. The division of your awareness, the separation of these layers of awareness and its manipulation, its direct manipulation of your subconscious and unconscious levels of awareness. And really recognize what happens with the higher mind when you're involving yourself with pornography. 
where do you go in those moments, okay? So, examine what's happening. What is happening to you? And why in the world would anybody want to place you in that position? Why would anybody want to open you up to manipulation in this way? What is the motivation beyond just making money? I mean, obviously there's big money involved in it, but that's just a side effect of it. The cause of it, the root reason for its existence has nothing to do with making a buck off of the pornography, okay? It's much deeper than that, much bigger than that, and much more about your whole life, not just your life in relation to pornography, okay? So, when you realize all of this going on, okay? it places you in a different relationship with the pornography. Doesn't mean you're not going to be attracted by it, okay? But you're in a different place now. You are taking hold of your awareness, your, the wholeness of your awareness, as you experience the pornography. So you're not being manipulated anymore. Especially when you let go of the shame involved in both pornography, sexuality, masturbation, etc. Okay? So there's several things to sort of juggle here, but juggle them you must. <laughs> you must break up this habitual reaction to pornography, because that's where the addiction lies in the habitual nature of the subconscious and unconscious mind. So, <clears throat> another aspect of pornography is it takes sexuality from its proper place in your body to your mind, okay? Pornography is all this mental thing. It's all about mental fantasy. Mental, it's all mental. Yes, there is a physical component and it's that satisfaction of the physical component with this mental tag that makes it so addictive, okay? So you need to break this dynamic. You need to take your sexuality back from being this totally mental thing to back in your body, you know? Make your sexuality about your body, not about your mind. Because your mind can go 24 hours a day, right? It can be addicted all the time. Your body can't be, you know? That's the thing. When you masturbate with pornography, once you have reached your orgasm, the desire ends, right? That connection ends. It's over until the next time when it builds, okay? So that is another key in breaking an addiction to pornography. So, <clears throat> what I recommend is that when 
you are drawn to pornography when your natural response in that moment will be to flip on some bit of pornography and masturbate, that instead you just masturbate instead of watching the pornography to bring you to that orgasm through all these visual cues. Go back to your sexuality being just in your body. Okay? And it really is that simple. That's really the most simple way of ending your addiction or at least taking control. I mean, pornography can have its place in one's own sexuality, especially if one is single, you know? Uh, but this is now where we come to that definition of addiction. You know, is it something that you feel compelled to, uh, you know, participate in it, that you, you really can't resist, that you end up spending hours with just automatically, excuse me, just automatically? It's really... I mean, if it's just something you partake in once in a while, that's not an addiction. But if it is something that takes up all of your, most of your time, a large part of your time, every day, that is addiction. But however you feel about it, address it. Address the shame. Address the discomfort and address that schism internally that separates the layers of your awareness and discards your higher mind. You've got to repair that, whether it is an addiction or not. You know, we all have to repair that in regard to our sexuality as human beings. And we all have to address the ways in which our behavior is shaped and manipulated by external forces. And we have to look at why and who. <laughs> These are important questions for the modern human being. <laughs> who, why, where, when, <laughs> ask, ask questions. Just always ask questions. Uh, it's the most powerful thing you can do is to question everything. And especially the things that we feel shame around. So, uh, there you go. And I hope now in the future, when people ask me this question, I can just point them to this video and I won't ever have to answer it again. Okay, so next time with the little magic box, we'll see what the question will be. And again, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments and they'll get added to the list and get cycled through. Okay, bye-bye.